Welcome to The Line Within Us, a podcast serving Christian men who are hungry to be the leaders God intends you to be. I'm your host, Chris Granger. Let's jump in. All right, guys, this is your spiritual kickoff episode. I'm happy to be here with you. Let's get into it. All right. First Peter, chapter two, verse nine. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. Guys, we are getting ready to unpack this one and see how you can simplify and apply this into your life as believers today. And I'm telling you guys, it's going to be a good one. Hopefully you're going to enjoy this. So let's buckle up. Let's get in and let's go. Now, first thing we need to know is where's first Peter. So the dad joke answer is well, it's before second Peter. <laughs> Technically, I'm not wrong. You'll find it in the New Testament, obviously, right after, right after James. So if you get to Hebrews, James, then you'll find first and second Peter. Okay. So first Peter right here is what we're going to be looking at. This week's going to be talking about some heavy stuff, guys. We're going to be talking about how we can, as men, overcome our addictions. And we're not going to be able to overcome our addictions by ourselves. No. But through Christ. And this verse is going to give us some insight on how you do that, okay? Because we're, we're reminded right here of our true identity. Peter tells us, a chosen, a chosen people, a royal priesthood, holy nation, God's special possession. That's who you are. That's who you are. You're not, uh, you know, an addict who is struggling with porn or cheating on your spouse or terrible with finances or just not smart or ugly or fat or whatever these identities that you have. That's not it. What you need to first recognize is, is, is that you're chosen. You're royal. You have a royal identity. Because maybe you found yourself in the past. And you, you caught yourself in a behavior that leads yourself to where you think that you can't be a leader. I can't be a man of God. Look at what I've done. And that addictive type of, of thinking can be a powerful force. And what it does, it wraps this chains around you. It throttles you. It makes you feel unworthy. And it distances you from your true purpose and your calling. And I'm going to tell you what, no one ever wakes up and says, today's the day I'm going to fall into a cycle of addiction. It just doesn't happen. You would never say that. Like, you would never wake up and say, today's the day I'm going to ruin my marriage. Today's the day I'm going to start watching pornography. And next thing I know, I'm not going to be sexually attracted to my wife. I'm not going to be able to, to be intimate with her. You would never say that. But it happens all the time. Right? These small choices gradually take over our lives. Peter, he's emphasizing. We are more than just a sum of our mistakes. That is not who you are. You are chosen. You are royal. You are cherished. So say that to yourself over and over and over again if you need to. I am chosen. I am royal. I am cherished by God. And this addiction that I have does not define me. Because that addiction, that sin, does not have the final say in your life. The only one that gets to define who you are is Christ. And he tells you right here, he sees you as perfect and righteous through his sacrifice, what he did for you. Your identity is not found in your failure, but in his victory. Let me say that again. Your identity is not found in your failure, but in his victory. You're his special possession. He values you, values you far beyond anything that we can comprehend. Even when you see yourself as lower as low than low, he sees you as a crown jewel in his kingdom. How crazy is that? I mean, think about the things that you value that that's a, a, a something in your life that's a special possession. Maybe it's, you know, uh, something from your grandparents, or something, a family heirloom or things like that. And how special that one thing is. And think for a second that the way God loves you doesn't even compare it, it, it your little bit of love for this special possession doesn't hold a candle to the way god loves you that's pretty cool and addiction often thrives right here i'm gonna give you the secret you want you want the secret to know where addiction where addiction usually thrives at guys in the dark in the secret it's in the isolation it's in that isolation where he convinces us that we are alone in our struggle. 
if I'm the evil one, that's what I want to do. I want every guy out there to think he's addicted. He's no good. He's not fit for use. That addiction controls him and that he needs to hide it. But as believers, what does the scripture say? Walk in the light. You cannot heal an addiction in the dark. You can't. The devil's going to kick your butt. If you fight him in the dark, he's going to win. He is. Just like I don't swim in shark infested waters because they're going to win. The evil one's going to win. Be careful. But when you put it into the light, guess what happens? The evil one loses his grip. And when he doesn't have that grip, he can't hold on. And, and God's light is going to shine. It's going to seek. It's going to guide and direct us. But here's what it takes to do this. Humility and courage. You got to be humble enough to say you need some help and you got to be courageous enough to do something about it. And I'm telling you, we start doing that out and walking into light. Man, that's where true healing occurs. That's where you bring your struggles out into the open. You're not trying to sit on it anymore. No, you're seeking God's guidance. Maybe you need to bring, have a, a, a community around you that is faith driven. That's going to help you dismantle those strongholds of addiction that you have in your life. Because that darkness cannot stand the power of the light. The evil one hates the light. Absolutely hates it. He wants you to stay in the dark because that's where he thrives. The last thing he wants you to do is expose it to the light. Because if you do that, he loses. Then you also have to rely on God's strength. Because if you're going to overcome a true addiction, it's not about your strength. You're not going to be able to do it. But if you rely on God's power to transform and renew us, got it right here in front of me. Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is that it was good, acceptable, and perfect. If you want that transformation? You better lean into Him. You better lean into Him. He's already given you victory over your sin. What you have to do is claim it and walk in it. Understand it. It was for you. That's the victory. If you're going to be the leader that God intends you to be, you're going to have to start leading by example. You're going to have to start showing others the transformative power of God's love and his grace in your life. And it starts with acknowledging, acknowledging the fact that you need help. You need his help and allowing him to start shaping you. And man, here are a couple of things you can consider about doing this. Lead with humility first. Humility. Acknowledge those struggles. And just acknowledge them up front. And seek God's guidance. Because you can be, you want to truly start being a leader, then you need to understand your need for God's strength in your life. That's where it all shifts. Everything. Then be a light to others. Once things start happening in your life, you see God moving, share it. Share your journey of overcoming addiction. And at that point, your, your testimony may be what draws someone else out and gets them out of darkness into the light. You see how that works? Your testimony, just like a lighthouse, kind of shines as a beacon for ships that are lost. You may be that beacon of hope for somebody right now who feels completely isolated and alone in the dark. See how that works? And then make sure you also surround yourself with fellow believers who are going to help hold you accountable and encourage you to keep on the path of your walk with Christ. Because together, you can overcome the challenges, but if you start trying to do this by yourself, the next thing you know, you find yourself alone on the path, be careful. This is where the evil one does so well. This is, again, why we started Blind Within Us community, because I, guys struggle here. I struggle here. So let's create an environment where guys can just be open, transparent, and vulnerable. And guess what? We're exposing light every day. Because when you start talking about this, in Christ, you're royalty. You are. Even if you've never even been to England, you're royal. And your, your, your circumstances may suggest otherwise. I'll just say what? You know what? You ain't defined by your circumstances. Your past mistakes, your addictions, they don't get to define you. You're defined by the one who calls us his own. And I just encourage you to embrace your identity in Christ. Walk in the newness of life. 
experience that true freedom that exists to be the leader he's called us to be. I'm telling you, fellas, it's start. It's time for us right now to start stepping up to our royal calling and start declaring what God has brought us out of that, that terrible darkness into his marvelous, marvelous light. And guys, that means you got to start taking some action. Just don't be a sideline Christian. And don't settle with just being a Christian. Be a disciple. Seek and pursue him each and every day. And think about this question here. How can you walk in God's light? Now, notice I didn't say, how can your buddy? Or how can your wife? Or how can your spouse? Or how can your boss? That guy? No, no, no. How can you? Quit shifting it on others. No. What can you do today to start walking in the light? We all have areas of, that we keep in the dark. We just do. What can we do to walk in the light? Now, you're hearing the line within this podcast. For some reason, you listen to this and you get to this point and you're not really sure where you're at with this whole faith, God, light, dark thing that I'm talking about. That's okay. You're here for a reason. I fully believe that God has you here, has you listen to this podcast. For some reason, you clicked on it and maybe you were just wanting to know something about First Peter and here you're at. And you've never surrendered your life to the Lordship of Christ. I'm here to tell you, don't put off today what God is calling you to do some business with. And I need you to first understand, you're not that addictive. I've talked about that. You're not defined by, by your addiction. What defines you is Christ. And think about this for a second. When he formed Adam, the first man, he formed him. He breathed the breath of life into his, into his nostrils. And Adam was face to face with his creator. It was perfect. And we are made in the image of God. That means you. If, you're, if you've just finished watching porn and turn on the line within us, guess what? You're made in the image of God too. And the stats say out there with, the way, with, with, with how the pornography industry is impacting us every day, that I know you guys are struggling with it because I hear it within our community all the time. But you need to know that that is not who you are. You are made in the image of God and whatever you think is a weakness, God sees as perfection. A royal priesthood. We just talked about it today. That's who you are. That's great. However, there's this little issue called sin. And sin entered the world. And when that did, that disrupt, that caused this chasm, this gap between us and God. Because we have sinners, people who fall short of the glory of God. That's, all, that's each and every one of us. And a holy and righteous God. And the problem is we start trying to close that gap ourselves and be doing good and do these things and give the money and all this stuff. Go to church, yada, yada, yada. All this stuff. Are those things bad? No. I want you to do all those things. But your salvation can't be found in them. No. We all fall short of the glory of God. There's nothing we can do to close the gap. We have this sin issue. God is holy and righteous. We are not. What can we do if we can't buy our way in, if we can't serve our way in? How, can we, how do we get it? We need it. We need a savior. We need a free gift of salvation. And we have it in Jesus Christ who came on the rescue mission from heaven for us. He was thinking about you when he left. He knew you needed a savior. He was born of a virgin. He performed all the miracles, all the teachings, all the, all the prophecies. He fulfilled them all. And his greatest sacrifice, what he ultimately did, was went to the cross for us. And his perfect blood ran and covered our sins. And he died. And guess what? They laid him in a tomb. He didn't stay there. Three days later, Jesus rose. He rose. We're not worshiping some dead guy. No, we're worshiping a living Savior. Then he ascended to heaven. And he sits right here in the Father right now. And there is no other name that's been given to us that we have that we can be saved by other than Jesus. He's it. So that means we have to take some action. If you, are, if you truly believe that the Bible is true, if you truly believe that you are made in his image, if you recognize that you are a sinner and you need a savior, you don't need some coach, you need a savior, and you truly believe that Jesus is it, what are you waiting on? Confess him as Lord. Lord over everything. Your life, your finances, your family, your, your, your intimacy with your spouse, everything, your career. All of it. All of it. Give it to him. 
and just say, Lord, I, I'm just going to follow you. Wherever you lead, I'll go. I want to be taking steps of obedience to listen and obey. And when you do, the Holy Spirit's going to come. You have a new heart. The blinders are going to go off. You're going to see the world in a whole new way. But more importantly, you're going to have the Holy Spirit convicting, and guiding, and directing you in every decision that you make. And that's where the magic happens. That's where you can start unleashing the lie within. That's where you start making an impact for the kingdom. Building up those treasures in heaven that Jesus is talking about. Because you're not defined by that darkness, doggone it. You're defined by him. So if you haven't, if you're ready to accept Christ as your savior, let's pray right now. I mean, you may be on a treadmill or something right now. I'm like, oh, I want to do it, but I'm, I'm on a treadmill. Well, I was just curious to keep walking, keep your eyes open, but don't put off what Lord, the Lord is calling you to do business with right now. Let's just pray together. So Father, whoever is listening right now, who is ready to confess you as Lord and Savior of their life, I just pray you hear their prayer. You hear, you feel their tears, that you give them comfort, you give them peace, you give them joy. Help them understand that this is the biggest decision they'll ever make in their life, Lord. I'm so glad that you're assigned to do it. I know that you're going to be just angels are rejoicing right now. They're doing backflips, they're hooping and they're hollering because that one sinner turned back to you. We love you, Lord Jesus. We praise you. So I just pray for that that one man or listen, a woman right now who's listening, who's just who's making that confession, who's calling out on you to be their Lord and Savior of your life. I pray you hear their prayer, that you just touch them greatly, that you bless them, that you give them wisdom and sermon and put some people in their life. They're going to help them learn how to put on that armor of God to go into the battle, to fight alongside of them, and to help them just be um, equipped and ready every day to do whatever it is you've called them to do. We love you, Lord. We praise you in Christ's name. Amen. So, fellas, out there, if you just accepted Christ as your Savior, I want to hear from you. I want to send you some free resources first and foremost to get you ready for the battle because you're in a battle. And if you don't believe you're in a battle, I can't help you. You probably shouldn't. Yeah, be honest, I don't know if the line with this is, is, is going to be a good podcast for you to listen to because if you don't think there's such thing as an evil one out there who's, that we're doing a battle against, you're not going to, the things I talk about is not going to resonate, okay? So just save yourself. There's lots of other secular podcasts out there. But if you just accept that Christ is your Savior and you believe that you're in a battle, I want to hear from you. So send me an email, chris at thelionwithin.us, okay? So send me that email. I'm going to hook you up with some free swag. Also, just want to do a virtual fist pump with you. Just make you feel, let you know that, that I love you, that I care for you. Welcome to the brotherhood. And also just want to make sure you're plugged into a good Bible-believing, gospel-preaching church. So important. So doggone important. We got guys all over the United States so we can help you get plugged in and make sure that you get into a church that's best for you. So I'm telling you, I want the lion. We're not a church. We come alongside you. We help you. We help lift you up. We help encourage you because most churches just do not do a good job of men's discipleship. And this is where we're leaning in hard. So again, I want to hear from you. Okay. Chris at the lion within dot us. Now, the Lion Within.us is the website, guys. Go check that out. Uh, give us a rating and review. But I'd love for you to just start your community experience today. Just, just start it. Quit putting it off. You've been listening to the show. You've been, you've been hearing me talk about it. I'm telling you, we put so much work and effort into this, this community. I guarantee you, it will bless you if you just lean in. If you just lean in, be willing to try something new. Now, I know no guy wants to try anything new because it's not something new and that's something we don't know. We don't, what, what if, blah, 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 blah. We'll have all sorts of excuses. I also say this. The last thing that evil one wants you to do is to step in and do what God's calling you to do. And he definitely doesn't want you to join a community of Christian brothers in Christ. They're going to come alongside and fight the battle with you. So if you just want to be stuck in a status quo, stay where you're at. Don't do anything. I hate it for you. But if you're ready to make an impact, if you're ready to lean in, to stop just being a Christian and start being a disciple, this is where we help. We have a discipleship journey. We literally have discipleship mastermind groups. We're leaning in these conversations. We're helping Christian men grow to be the leaders that God calls them to be. And we're putting a ton of intentional focus on this. But you don't get any advantage of that. Sitting on the sidelines. So don't be the back row Baptist. Lean into us, fellas. If you are the back row Baptist, what's the altar, talk, altar call time? It's time to get up and come on. So get up, head over to the linewithin.us. Start your community experience today. Got a month for free. We'd let you try it for a month. 
you know what? Just lean in and I guarantee you, you will be blessed. All right. So guys, get after look. Come back on Wednesday. We had a good conversation with a guy, former Marine. Great story. Talks about addiction. Uh, that addiction to pornography led him to uh, the arms of many other women that ultimately could have caused his marriage to fail. But I'm here to tell you, something happens that you're not going to see coming. And I really want you to come back and hear his story as it unpacks. So, fellas, again, the line within that US is how you hook up with this, all the resources, all the devotions, all the stuff that we do, the community, the devotions, the um, leadership mastermind groups, all that stuff out there, fellas. Summit Leadership Development, the line within that US. Go get started today. All right. So, come on back on Wednesday, guys. I'm telling you, you're going you're gonna to enjoy this one, particularly for you military guys out there. This is going to be a, gr- a great one for you on Wednesday. So, have a great day. Thank you for listening means so much to me. Maybe you want to be a supporter of the show. If you like the messages, hop on and be a monthly donor. Just be a, be a monthly donor of the show. This is where it can help us greatly continue to push back and do what God's called us to do. And your support will go a long, long way. All right. So have a great day, guys. Get after it. And remember, keep unleashing the lion with that. House cats, go ahead and skip this message. This is for the lions. Because we know that the evil one is coming at you daily, trying to steal, kill, and destroy everything in your life. We recognize that you try to face each day with strength, determination, and purpose. But even the strongest need a brotherhood behind them. At The Lion Within Us, we created an online Christian's men community where we can grow, connect, and strengthen your walk with God. It's more than just a community. It truly is a brotherhood. Be warned, this is not for the faint-hearted. This is where you push your limits, growing stronger in your faith and rising above the ordinary. Here, we challenge you to become the leader God intends you to be. The time to act is now, and your 30-day free trial is waiting. No excuses. No delays. It's time to step up and join the community. Head over to thelionwithin.us. That's thelionwithin.us to get started today.